today we're going to look at the range of Dune kits from the 1984 uh, movie. And these were released by a modelling company called Revel, who uh, made quite a few different film licenses. And I think the idea was after Star Wars hit big, they scrabbled round for pretty much anything. Um, they weren't the only company, obviously, so there were kits available from The Black Hole, uh, other films of that ilk, and also from Dune, which was a, a strange choice for, for toys and models. There was a range of action figures. Um, I'm not really sure that Dune is a film that would be either suitable for children or even understandable for them deals with very adult themes. Um, but they did three kits and we're going to look at them today. These are not mint in box kits, I have made them up. They were made up many 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 years ago. Um, there's good points and bad points for all of them. So I'll show you them in, uh, in order. If we start with, they did three, you had the sandworm diorama kit. Um, the sandworms lived on the, the planet of Arrakis, uh, basically huge great worms. Strange choice for a model kit, a worm. They did the Ornithopter, uh, and this was, um, the, the, the world of Dune is quite strange in that it's science fiction but it's also quite retro. So they used things, they didn't use computers, they used things like ornithopters. Now an ornithopter in the book, it flaps its wings, the ones in the film, they didn't do that. They flew. Uh, this is a, one of the bad guys ornithopters, the Harkonnens. Um, really interesting design. We'll get to it when I show you the model. Uh, a little bit bug-like. And the third kit was the good guys. Well, originally the bad guys, the Harkonnens own these originally and then the uh, the Atreides, who were the good characters, took them over. And this is the sand crawler, so it's a vehicle for going on sand. So you've got the paint and the sand crawler, you've also got the ornithopter in the background there, attacking it. Um, really nice paintings on the kits. The sides of the boxes showed you various stills from the film. So you've got Sting, young Sting, is. Uh, uh, Faye Rother, um, renowned for being terrible in the film. I actually think he's pretty good. Um, you've got the picture of the uh, Emperor of the Known Universe, Shaddam IV, uh, and his daughter. And then you've got the, the nominal hero of the film, uh, who has so many names in the film, it's unreal. He's Paul Atreides, also known as Moadib, uh, also known as Usul. Lots of different names, all strange, and his mother. And then on the other side, you've got the two other kits in the series, so the Ornithopter and the Sandworm. And then the stills change a little bit on the Ornithopter. So you've got Sting again. You've got uh, Paul's father, uh, Duke Leto Atreides, with his little doggy. And then Paul and his mother again. Family split up by Sting there. And then on the sandworm, you've got Paul and his mother in what was an interesting idea in the book and really done well in the film is what's called a still suit. So it's basically a survival suit for the desert that recycles your sweat and your wee wee and your boo. And uh, again, not really suitable for children, and it keeps you alive in the desert. And then you've got the bad guy, Baron Vladimir Harkonnen who in the film had lots and lots of illnesses, uh, pustules and boils. And then Sting again, obviously Sting was the big thing for the film. He was a big star at the time, uh, singing in the band Police, um, and he was heavily promoted. So that's the three boxes, and they're really nice. Let's have a look at the instruction sheets for each one. So, Standard of the time Revlon instruction sheet. Very flimsy. Uh, it's just very simple kit on this June sandworm. 
I just showed you put together. And one part, which you'll, you'll find out why it's funny when I show you the actual model, is it's got a painting guy for the figures you get. And these are Fremen, who are sort of the, uh, the warriors in the, the desert. And it gives you a painting guide for painting them. And there's two ways to display the worm. You can have it as a worm, or you can have it on a display base. As I say, well, I'll show you the, the kits as we do the instructions. So let me grab the worm. Well, as I said, these were made up many years ago by myself. The worm, you get various segments you can put together to make a worm, which is a little bit boring, there's his tail. Or you can put them onto this desert base, and so basically that slots in like that. So you've got a desert base, and then the worm coming out. Um, it's a very simple kit, not very well designed. Each section is exactly the same, so it looks more like a piece of uh, radiator hose off a car than the worm from the film. And then you've got the, the mouth of the worm, which I added some clay in there because it was just plastic at the, on the original kit. And then this is the part that, that makes me laugh, the instructions. If you imagine these are the figures, I don't know how close you can see. You can see how tiny they are and it gives you a painting guide for them, which I think is quite funny. But it's a nice kit. Quite rare I think. I, Never really seen them again for sale after I bought them. That's the uh, sandworm. So if we go on to the sand crawler, this is the vehicle that was used to patrol the deserts. Again, very simple instruction. It's quite a simple kit. This one, and this one does show the drawback of the kits because of the age of the kits. The plastic in them used has become incredibly brittle. It's just so easy to break them. So this one is in pieces. I do plan to put it back together at some point, but it would probably destroy the kit to get it back on. These were on very, very short and brittle axles, and they went on the side, and they were sort of the wheels of the kit. They do look like big acorns. Good design, but I suppose it probably makes sense to go on the desert. And then, excuse the... That's desert sand, it's not dust. So it's a nice kit. Everything in this, this model range is browns, really dull to paint. Weathering is everything. And then, I don't know if you can see that, it's got a little, I don't want to pull it too far, little uh, canopy that opens. I was going to put some figures in there, but then there's nowhere for their feet to go. But I did paint a little, it's going back years, to paint a little screen in there with a sandworm on. It's missing the front gun, so I can't find them out there. It's a shame. <coughs> Pardon me. It's all the dust. That's a little moving pass on these kits. That, I think, is... It's a nice kit, but it broke very simply. The best I'm saving to last, which is the Ornithopter. These are the instructions for the Ornithopter. And as you can see, they're bigger than the other instructions because it's a much more complex kit. This is a really, really nice kit. You get uh, some nice detail in it and work in parts. Let me grab him down. This is the Ornithopter. Like I say, this is by far my favourite. There's so much detail on this kit. It's really nice. So you've got some detailing on the wings, clear canopies, you got a little ramp that comes up and down, and there's a cockpit in there, and I did actually put figures of Paul Atreides and a dead Harkonnen in there, from a scene in the film where he crashes. These you can put up or down the landing gear, and then the rear landing gear is actually hinged, so it can go back up in, very, very gently does it because it's very brittle when they come out. I think that is an absolutely stunning design and a stunning kit. If you ever see this one, 
that'd be the one I would splash me money out on. Get okay, very dusty, these were made up and put in the attic years ago. Again, brown. You could do it black. The Harkonnen seem to like black, but uh, I think I must have had a, a, a lot of brown when I made these kits. I've done them all in brown. So that's the three kits. I say they're quite rare now. You very rarely see them. Let me move that because if that worm goes down, let's go for them. My favourite is the Ornithopter. I do like the diorama, even though it is very badly done. Um, you could make it look better, but then if you're going to do that, there's probably cheaper garage kits to get. It would look better. And the sand crawler is a bit of a dull design. And it doesn't help that it's so brittle, the legs just snap off. But there we go, so three quite rare kits from the film Dune, or Dune, if you're American. And uh, if you do see them, I would suggest you uh, grab them. They do tend to go for silly money now. And I'm glad I got them when I did. Well, that's all for now, and I'll see you again. Bye.